It's wildly if you want to name change. <laughs> well, I'm going to show my age. I'm going to start my message with having us sing the first verse of an old childhood song. If you know it, please sing along. And Mari, are we going to do the, I don't, usually don't do this, but all right, Amber, let's go on. If you know it, sing along. keep climbing up that same spout when every time it does it gets washed out in the sun. Why does it keep repeating the same pattern and expecting different results? Insanity. Insanity. <laughs> Insanity. That's absolutely right. You know, the law of cause and effect, the same state of mind, creates the same results. I'm 68, almost 69, and I'm still climbing up that same water spot. Those old fears can still come up. Those old thought systems can still sneak up. Anybody else like that? Am I the only one? Oh, good. I hate to be all alone up here. Well, good news. Palm Sunday shows us how to change that. The freedom. Way to freedom. Only trouble is, nobody wants to go through the crucifixion it takes to get there, right? Now, luckily for us in unity, we interpret scripture metaphysically, meaning, oh, what is that story in me? They're all states of mind, and it's crossing out states of mind. So let's start at the beginning. Jesus has his 15 minutes of fame, marching into Jerusalem on a donkey, and people are, yay, Jesus, we love you, waving the palms, having a ball. And by Friday night, they're yelling, crucify him, crucify him. Why did he do that? It appears that he's a victim. But he knew what was laying for him. He knew they were out to get him. Why did he go up that water spout when he knew what was going to come down? You know, victim consciousness is a part of good old time religion. It's a very key part of it. But each one of us has been victimized. But no one is a victim. If I said, let's share our stories, we could spend the whole day, couldn't we? I'll share my victim story, you share yours, and we'd all just stay stuck in our victim stories. But the universe is under the laws of divine order. There is meaning and purpose in everything, even our crucifixions. And Jesus' life story, if you look at his whole life story, metaphysically, symbolically, it shows us the way to resurrect above those stories. You know, he said, he quoted the Old Testament when he said, don't you know you are gods? Not I'm a God, come worship me, but what are we creating? The same old thing, like the spider going up the water spout, the law of cause and effect? As long as I stay in this state of mind, I'll keep creating the same thing. And the beauty of the divine order of it is our life experience, meaning whatever's been in your face this week, that's my crazy week. Good news, though, we get to blame the solar flares now. I, I, wanted, I love to have something to blame. And this, this week, we get to blame the solar flares and Mercury's retrograde, so none of us can be responsible this week. But we're here to cross out those state of minds so we can resurrect to those higher experience. And sometimes it's so much easier to feel like a victim than to do what it takes to cross those out. The Course in Miracles reminds us that trials are but lessons that you failed to learn, presented once again, so where you made a faulty choice before, you can now make a better one, and thus escape all the pain that you chose before, your choice before has brought you. In other words, there's not a man in the sky, a man in the sky God, 
that's doing it to us. Most of us do it to ourselves. I don't like to admit that any more than you do. Like that spider, I keep climbing up that same spout and expecting there to be no rain to wash me down. It takes courage to ask, what in me needs to be healed? What is this old wound that keeps being triggered? And then to cross it out. We all have to experience, every one of us, no exception. We have to experience the law of cause and effect. What's that state of mind and everything in our subconscious that is drawing in those same life experiences? You know, I'm a fan of Shirley MacLaine. I don't care what they say about her, <laughs> how bad of a mother she might have been. I, I, I'm a fan of hers. And she said, one of the greatest quotes, she said, the greatest form of love is to allow the consequences that accrue from another's own free will. Isn't that a beautiful thought? Let me read it again. The greatest form of love is to allow the consequences that accrue from another's own free will. And that's what we're all learning here. We've come to this earth plane to, to be those gods, quote unquote. Oh, if I do this, this is what happens. If I'm in this frame of mind, this is what I'll draw to me. And it's hard to watch those we love when they're suffering, we want to you know, jump in and fix it. How many here desire a higher life experience? Everybody desires? How many of you here want to go through the crucifixion to, uh, <laughs> to get you there? Nobody, right? I joined Weight Watchers last week. No applause, please. <laughs> I know I need it. <laughs> but you know what's happening as I'm losing weight and stopping that obsessive eating, I'm have to, having to deal with all the dis-ease or the low-grade anxiety that makes me shovel all that. You know, last night I'd been doing so good all week. God, before I went to bed, I couldn't sleep. I got, we had some leftover popcorn. Man, I was just <laughs> shoveling that. Anybody else eat popcorn that way instead of one at a time? <laughs> So we have to deal with, okay, what is making me crazy? You know, what is making me do this? Are you ready to get off your cross? Are you ready? Well, here's a how-to, part one and part two, how to get off your cross. You know, every Palm Sunday, I quote Dolly Parton, whether you get sick of it or not, every Palm Sunday I'm here, you're going to hear Dolly Parton. Remember what she said? Get off the cross, the world needs the wood. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, so all that unease that many of us have leads to disease. We want to cross it out. Any fear, anger, unforgiveness. I talked to a friend this week, and we were blaming the solar flares and mercury retrograde, and it's so fun to blame something else. But she decided this week she was doing something different, so she came up with a two-part plan. Unity's denials and affirmation. She's led a life of suffering. And she said, she started to say, I'm done suffering. I'm done suffering. I trust my union with God. Let's say that together. I'm done suffering. I trust my union with God. And I thought, wow, I like that. So I started saying that, although these prayers have to be in your own words, suffering hasn't been my life issue. I've had other life issues. So I changed mine, and I invite each of you to reword it to fit your issue. I started to say, I give no energy to fear-based thinking together. I give, I give no, no energy, energy to fear-based fear thinking. I'm safe in my union with God. I'm, I'm safe, safe in my union with God. Or for a fun quickie, get behind me, Satan. I am that I am. <laughs> I just uh, forget it. <laughs> Remember, Satan is just our own shadow. We're afraid of our own shadow. But let's try, I release all notions of separation together. I release all notions of separation. I am in union with God. I am in union with God. Does that feel better, any one of those? Make up your own when you get home. Or, or blame the solar flares, whatever. <laughs> the human ego perceives through the mirror dimly that darkened glass of fear and separation. And then we make up stories around it. Don't you love to make up stories around how you see things? Feeling denied, deprived, persecuted, and abused. Well, here's what it takes. Get your pencils out. Number one, it takes introspection. 
Where did that come from? What is that fear about? Where did that, or hate, anger, unforgiveness, whatever you issue, where did that come from? What triggered that in me? Mm -hmm. And then start to cross it out. Start to cross it out. The second thing, it takes the Holy Spirit, by whatever name you call that loving presence of the divine. Of myself, I am powerless, but with God, all All things things are possible. possible. Don't do it alone. Ask the Holy Spirit to move in it through you. Call it forth. Number three, it takes surrender of those fear-based thoughts. <coughs> surrender of those old wounds, crossing out whatever you have to cross out. Get off the cross, the world needs the wood. Are you ready to claim your power? Are you? That's what Palm said. I don't hear a yes. Are you ready to claim your power? Yes. Don't you know you are gods? Yes. All right. But what have we created with a law of cause and effect? Well, it looks pretty good in here today. We created something wonderful here, haven't we? But then we always have, you know, little things. We've been given dominion and authority. But that's not dominion and authority of everything out there or all your friends and neighbors. It's dominion and authority over what? Our state of mind. And some days it has dominion over me instead of me having dominion over it. And then I need to go to the cross. Cross something out. Well, the apostles had to learn it too. They were no better than us. Some people think holy people are (laughs) nature perfect, you know? God, thank heaven that's not true. They wanted Jesus to do it for them. And finally he said to them, hey guys, I'm out of here. You will never get this. You keep looking at me to do it for you. Those weren't his exact words, but that's my <laughs> I like to put my own you know, taste on it. John was the only one. They all ran and hid when he was being crucified. John was the only one who stayed with them. They all ran and hid. Well, there was an archaeological find. Don't you love archaeological finds? It was a memo. A memo that was found <laughs> to Jesus, son of Joseph, woodcut crafters, carpenter shop, Nazareth, from the Jordan Management Consultants of Jerusalem. <laughs> Dear Sir, thank you for submitting the resumes of the 12 men you have chosen for managerial positions in your new organization. All of them have now taken our battery of tests, and we have not only run the results through our computer, but also arrange personal interviews for each of them with our psychologist and vocational aptitude (laughs) consultant. It is the staff opinion that most of your nominees are lacking in background, education, and vocational aptitude for the type of enterprise you are undertaking. They do not have the team concept. We would recommend that you continue your search for persons of experience in managerial ability and proven capability. Now Simon P- Peter is emotionally unstable and given to fits of temper. Andrew has absolutely no qualities of leadership. The two brothers, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, place personal interest above company loyalty. Thomas demonstrates a questioning attitude that would undermine morale. We feel that it is our duty to tell you that Matthew has been blacklisted by the Greater Jerusalem Better Business Bureau. (laughs) James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, definitely have radical leanings, and they both registered high score on the manic depressive side. (laughs) One of the candidates, however, shows great potential. He's a man of ability and resourcefulness meets people well, has a keen business mind, has contacts in high places. He's highly motivated, ambitious, and responsible. We recommend Judas Iscariot as your comptroller and right-hand man. All the other profiles are self-explanatory. We wish you every success in your new venture. Sincerely yours, Jordan Management Consultants. I love that. I've had that for years. I tucked it away in my package of goodies. Uh, Scripture tells us all have fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us. There's not a perfect one here, is there? I hope so. I hope is there one. Is there one perfect one? <laughs> oh, I know how perfect you are. <laughs> 
We're still learning, aren't we? We're still growing. We're still expanding our consciousness. We're still crossing things out. It's a journey. It's a journey of love and forgiveness and hiccups. And Jesus used I am affirmations to strengthen that in him. He, whenever he did an affirmation, and he did a lot of them, as you'll see, they all started with I am. Because when God spoke to Moses, he said, I am that I am. And every time we say I am, we're speaking of our divine nature. I am. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Now, bread is substance. Mm -hmm. So I am. I am one with divine substance. I'm one with God as source and substance. Divine ideas flow into me, and the very substance around me manifests on earth as it is in heaven. Please say with me, I am the bread of life. Together, I, I am the bread of life. <clears throat> it doesn't mean everything in life is easy, but it does mean that all is provided to resurrect above it. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. That doesn't mean we don't have dimmer switches. Anybody here have a dimmer switch? <laughs> I, I think I've got one in every room. You know, my dimmer switch goes up and down. But we can always heal and resurrect by turning that dimmer switch back up. Together, I am the light of the world. One more time. I am the light of the world. <coughs> Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And what he meant was, I shepherd my thoughts. I shepherd my state of mind. I, I cross out those fear-based thoughts. I watch and shepherd that state of mind. Together, I, I am, am the good, good shepherd. shepherd. Again, I, I am, am the good shepherd, shepherd of my state of mind. Of my state of mind. All right. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Wow. When you know your union with God, you can resurrect over anything, anything. You don't fear those crucifixions. Together, I am the resurrection and the life. Again, I am the resurrection and the life. And don't let that feel blasphemous when we say it. Jesus meant for us to say it too. He came to show us the way to resurrect. I am the resurrection and the life. He said, I am the true vine. A vine is connected to its source. And each one of us is connected individually and collectively to our source. We're connected to wisdom, strength, abundance, whatever is needed. I am the true vine. Together, I, I am, am the, the true vine. vine. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am meaning the divine aspect of me, the one that goes up on the dimmer switch, not down. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And when you know that truth, you will be set free from all those crucifixion experiences. I am divine by nature. Together I am the way, the truth, and the life. Together I am the way, the truth, and the life. Life wasn't meant to be a struggle. It wasn't meant to be, but it is meant to offer us opportunities to cross out what needs crossing out. Let's say one more time my friend's affirmation. I'm done suffering, I trust my union with spirit. Together, I'm done suffering, I trust my union with spirit. And let's take that into prayer. God, we are willing to walk through that crossing out experience. We know we walk through it with you, with grace and with ease, protected and guided and strengthened and awakened through that experience. We let go of any resistance to those life experiences. And we rise up on wings of truth, awaiting that resurrection next week when we celebrate fully and completely together. We are so grateful. We say thank you, Father, Mother, God, in the nature of the Christ. Amen. Amen.